and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Amen. Let's turn to our Lord in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for drawing us to your house this morning. And as we gather in reality and virtually, so to speak, Lord, we know that you house all reality within your own hand. We thank you, Lord, that we are connected through Jesus Christ and that even though we are set at a distance, we have been brought near by the blood of Christ to your truth and your holiness and your glory. Father, we pray that you would fit us indeed with the defenses that are proper to the realm of faith, that you would cover us with the righteousness of Christ, that you would help us then to don those instruments of defense that we have, that we would be sheltered, having the whole armor of God. Lord, we pray that you would bless and keep all those who are struggling this morning. We do pray indeed for all the household of faith, especially those who are sick, Father, that you would be near to them in a special way, that you would tend to them, and that you would show your mercy to them. Father, we want to remember especially Joan Deppa, Pastor and Gary Jan, or Pastor Gary, and Jan Kangas. Lord, there are others who are struggling with COVID, and we pray that you would please be with them. Those who are touched in our congregation, and Lord, we know this pandemic as it's ramping up, we pray, Father, for your defenses for us. We pray that you would grant us patience and endurance as we stand fast. Lord, even as we attempt to uh, stem the tide of this by being separate and following the directives given to us, we pray that you would help us to be patient in it. But Lord, we pray for an end to it, that you would bring it to an end, that we could embrace one another again, truly and physically, for we long for that. Yet, Lord, we remember that Paul, as he was an ambassador in chains, was bound with very real physical chains, and yet he said that your word is not bound. So we remember this, Lord, and we ask that you would help us to live in that word that is not bound. Father, we pray for Christy Lund. We ask that you would bless her as she continues her fight against cancer, completed with the chemotherapy that she's undergone. We pray for little Gavin Hillman and his family. Lord, that you would strengthen especially his family, for Gavin has shown remarkable faith in the face of this battle, but we pray for his family that has to watch him suffer and suffer so greatly. We, we ask that you, you would be with them. Lord, bless Corky Lejoyce and protect him. We pray for Richard Juntnan, for Jim Sonnenberg, we pray for John Severson and family, Sarah Dahl, who is now recovering from a second hip surgery. We pray, Lord, that your blessing would be on her. For Ruby Munter, Don Maunu, Judy Marshall, Nancy Quivisto, Marlene Walters, Eddie and Cheryl Pumala. Lord, we pray that you would gather us together with the cords of your love. We pray that you would grant to us the same boldness that you gave to Paul as he requested the church to pray for him. Lord, we ask likewise that you would pray for all of those who open their mouths to bear witness, that you would give us that boldness that we need to preach your word faithfully and without fear. We thank you, Father, for this. We thank you for your truth that stands in the face of all fear, for the victory over death that you have earned for us. Father, we thank you that we can come to you as your dear children. We ask that you now close us all together in the arms of your love and fold us near to the to the bosom of Christ, we pray. Thank you, Lord, and we pray in his name. Hear us as we join together, praying as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. We're going to join together singing two songs, I Surrender All and You Are My All in All. verse this morning is from James chapter 2 verses 15 and 16 reading these words in the name of our Lord suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food if one of you says to him go I wish you well keep warm and well fed but does nothing about his physical need what good is it amen let us pray Lord we thank you for the plainness of your word and we ask that you would help us to help one another in these simple and normal ways that knowing, Lord, that in this way we indeed fulfill a very spiritual duty. We thank you, Father, for giving us one another as neighbors, as brothers, and as friends. We pray that you would help us to extend ourselves 
toward those in need. Thank you, Lord God, for your aid. We ask that you would bless us all together. For Jesus' name's sake, we pray. Amen. We're going to join in singing now the offertory hymn number 250, God of Grace and God of Glory. peace to everybody. What a joy to be together for worship. Uh, even the few of us that are together here, but the rest of you that are online with us, we are grateful to be able to share the word this morning. Thank you. Well, greetings of grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It's really been quite a week in the midst of all of the things that have happened with covid uh, even in our own congregation, the people that have been involved, our prayers are with you all. Uh, last Saturday, we had the memorial service for little Sage and Sloan Milbrandt, uh, Corey and Amanda's two little girls that um, had died last year within their first day of living. It was really a, a special service to be able to, I think, put some closure for them and also to be able to encourage them with the word and coming off of All Saints Day when we remember the people that have gone before us and left um, such faithful footprints, I was thankful to even think that these two little girls who most will never meet and had never met left footprints on our hearts that would last forever. And I am thankful for that as well. 
And then this morning, I've always felt myself to not be a very anxious person, but it's amazing when you look at all of the uh, cases of COVID, and I even had a, what do you call it, a, I had a tag, I got tested myself, and then when I came back negative, um, I was quite excited, especially when I got the, the email at about one in the morning when I was at our hunting camp, and I read it, and I was like, hallelujah, praise the Lord, thank you, and then it was like, wow, that was, that was real. That was something I was actually facing, and anxious was a fair word for me, and I... Uh, but then we have a text like we have today, which I hope is really encouraging to you, uh, especially in light of what it tells us today. We're going to be looking this morning at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, reading in Jesus' name. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness." So then, let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us to wrath or for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. Amen. Amen. If you would remember back to last Sunday, the message of Pastor Nathan, when he talked about the coming of the Lord, that it's going to come, the trumpet call will sound, and I'm actually going to read verses 16 through 18 of the text from last week. Verse 16 says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. And it's verse 18 there. It says, therefore, encourage one another with these words that we come into our text. And right away, it tells us this on the day of the Lord, how it's going to come. And it says, now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. And I thought a lot about that. You know, we are not supposed to worry when the end is going to come. We know that it's going to come, and it's going to come suddenly, and it's going to come, like it says, like a thief in the night. It's going to come like uh, labor pains upon a pregnant woman. Uh, and Thankfully, I have never been that pregnant woman to have to go through that. But I've watched it, and I've watched how those pains have come on. And there's nothing you can do. And the thief in the night illustration for us to have an understanding that things are going to happen. But we are to be encouraged because we know that that is coming. We know the reality of what is in store. We know the reality that how we are to live our lives in the fullness of each day and the understanding that that day is going to come. And we need to be encouraged in the way we approach it. In light of the events that had happened this week, you know, and in the last few weeks with COVID and all of the things that uh, we've seen there and the things people are facing and uh, the scare that is actually out there, you know, things are going to come and go. We're going to have lots of things happen in our lives. And I thought of all of the big events, the things we face and how we face them. 
you know, from, well, I thought of um, marriage, how that comes on and the joy that it brings there. I thought of children and when they come along, I thought of um, other things that we've faced. Death of parents, maybe death of um, children, death of friends. You know, those things all happen in our lives. We see sicknesses and things that happen along the way. And people recover uh, from these sicknesses. Some have not recovered. We see so many multiple things, even in our everyday lives, as we've watched so many of the things that have happened recently from, um, well, just watching friends get afflicted by COVID, watching people have to go through the sicknesses and the diseases, and even to watch, you know, such a close friend and Pastor Jeff at St. Matthew's actually die from it. And to realize that all of these things happening around us are going to happen. And the Lord is not surprised by what's going on. The Lord knows these events. The Lord knows what's happening. And I think for us, we have to be aware of that as well and not be f so fearful and not be afraid and not to be anxious because he tells us to live our lives in the fullness of what he's given us. And I think that's described well as we look at these next few verses. In verse 3, it says, While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon, as I already talked about, labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But then it says in verse 4, But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. So then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. You know, I, I'm always thankful that I have not um, battled drinking and drunkenness. You know, that, that hasn't been a a problem in my life, especially over the last 40 years. I've never even had a drink or anything because I just never had a desire. I have no problem with people being able to have a drink or something, but it's very clear to us that we are to be sober in our life and the way we face situations and the way we face what is coming. And to be awake during the day, sleep at night, but be awake and aware of what is going on around us. And you see those things that are going on around. And then it gives an example to us of how we are to live our lives. And it's putting on the full armor of God, as Pastor Nathan read for us in the scripture reading out of Ephesians chapter 6. You know, we have looked at the armor of God many times and the examples that's laid out. And I want to look one more time at several of these examples that it gives for us on putting on this full armor of God and how we... As Christians in this world are to stand firm in the faith that we have because of Christ. And I even titled this message, Standing Firm on the Lord Alone. Because if we try to stand firm on our own understanding, on our own uh, comprehension of what we see going on around us, we're going to fail. But the reality is, is that when we stand firm in the Lord and what he has promised us, and realize that so much of the battle around us is against principalities and powers. It's a spiritual battle. And we can face this spiritual battle definitely in the strength of the Lord and what he has promised us. Now look once again uh, in Ephesians 6 with me, if you would. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Can you imagine trying to face that on your own? We can't do it. We cannot face this battle apart from the Lord. 
And I think of how many people are trying to face the battle that way. How many people are trying to stand alone and trying to make an understanding, come up with an understanding of the way these things are happening around us. You just can't do it. But then when you look at what it tells us to do, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand it in the evil day. And having done all, to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. I've always wondered that, the flaming darts of the evil one. But when you realize that this breastplate of, uh, that they, the shield that they held, uh, it could be covered in water. And oftentimes flaming arrows were shot. And those arrows would be extinguished by that water and stuff that was on that arm, uh, on that um, leather and the stuff that was contained in that shield. The flaming darts to us when we look at what's coming from the Lord. You know, there's so many words that hurt us. There's so many things that are said and so many things that we see that we have to face. And understanding that we can face anything with the power of the Lord before us. You know, many of us have been hurt at different times by things that have been said. I always hear that statement that it takes 10 positive statements to make up for the one bad one that you hear and take to light. Thankfully, you know, many people can withstand that, um, but some are very tender. And we have to be so careful of what we say to others because words can hurt, words can sting. But we're dealing with a battle now that is so great that we have to understand how it means to stand firm in the Lord. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. The word the Lord promises us will never return void. If we go to his word and seek his truth and seek his direction and seek what he has to offer us through his word, don't ever give up on the Bible. Always look to the word. If you've got questions, if you've got doubts, if you've got um, anger issues even of things you're dealing with and you don't know how to battle it on your own, Go back into the word and let it bring you peace. You know, and I, as I say so often, obviously the gospels are very peaceful. But go back into the book of Proverbs and in the book of the Psalms and be encouraged by the way that they faced, that the way that especially King David faced so many of the trials he had. You know, he was called a man after God's own heart and yet we see so many of the trials he faced and I think the only way he was able to face those was because of the strength of the Lord battling with him. Finally, it tells us to pray at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, but also praying for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to perform the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in change, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. That's the same challenge for us, to speak the word boldly. I realize that through so much of the things that have going on, been going on around us, we are, we are at times guarded because we don't want to offend people and we don't want to... Uh, really speak the word as it needs to be spoken. You know, sin is sin. People are really going to be going to hell. That's not a question. That's a reality. That's the truth. And unless they hear the word, and unless the Lord works in their life, only the Lord saves, and only the Lord works salvation. But we, especially as pastors are called to be bold in speaking the truth of the word of, the, of God and not to be afraid of it, not to be afraid of letting the truth out there as to what is happening around us. 
and not to be ashamed of who we have been called to be. I'm trying to get back to the, my text here. In 1 Thessalonians 5, at the end, it says this. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Always remember that. Our salvation isn't based upon anything we do. It's upon who Jesus is. Our salvation is in him alone. And when you, when you can trust that fully and know that the Lord is the one that's in this for us. The Lord has suffered all and died on the cross that we might have life. When you realize all of those things are done for you, we can have a boldness. We can have the certainty of standing firm in the hope of salvation that is so very real. Final verses here say this. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, as just as in fact you are doing. Are we doing that enough? Are we encouraging and building each other up, even in these difficult times? Even in seeing what's going on around us? I know that the prayer life of this church, especially right now, is as great as it's ever been. There is so much prayer going out for each other and for people around us. It's just evident. It is so strong, and I'm so thankful that people are reacting um, so positively toward each other. But it's also in this idea of standing firm in the Lord. You know, we know what our end is because of him. We can live our lives fully and appreciate each day because of what Jesus has done. We know that our sins are forgiven in his name and blood. And if you don't know that, seek out a brother, seek out uh, a sister, a pastor, somebody, and make sure of that confession of your faith, that you know that Jesus is there with you and for you. Because one day we are all going to stand before the throne of God. And we are going to have Jesus as our advocate, or we're going to stand alone. I pray that you would know that strength of standing firm in Jesus. Because with him as your advocate, with him as our sacrifice, there's no question. That blood of Jesus is sure. And we stand there knowing the love of Jesus for us as individuals. I know so many people that are praying for so many people. And we give that opportunity often in the closing prayer to remember the people in our lives who we know need to know Jesus. Even if you have a, a question of somebody's faith, I pray that you would continue to be faithful and continue to lift them up because that is one of the gifts we've been given is to be a people of prayer. Know that in these times, the coming of the Lord is very real. It's going to happen. And the dead will rise first and the, the rest of us that are alive will rise up together with him if it's in this time of our life. We don't know when that day is, but we're not supposed to fret because the coming of the Lord is sure. And that day will come, and we're not supposed to be anxious about it. Uh, a lot of people fear death. But the reality is, is that if we stand strong in the Lord, if we stand knowing his love for us, knowing that that death on the cross was real, we will be with him, as it says here, for eternity. I am so thankful for what we profess as a church and believe in Jesus Christ. Knowing the hope of salvation, the hope of eternity, is a very real hope for those who believe. He sings, we believe and live. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in a closing prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, what a blessing we have in knowing you. What a blessing we have in being able to share the word and proclaim the truth of God. Lord Jesus, you have assured us in your word of what is to come. 
And Lord, I pray that we would live in that reality, knowing that the whole power, the full power of the Trinity is at our disposal. The power of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And knowing that we are going to battle here, there's things we're going to face, but we can face it when we face it in the assurance of Jesus. Guide us, Father. So many of us do have people in our lives that are hurting, people that are sick, that are shut in, people that are even battling COVID right now, and people we are lifting up individually to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers as we offer them to you now silently. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for hearing our prayers. And even as I said it, you may pray silently. If you're at home alone, you can pray out loud. I just ask that we would always remember to pray for each other, to encourage one another, all the more as we see the day approaching. Praise Jesus. All these things we pray in your precious name. Amen. Now humble yourselves and hear the benediction. To him who is able to do immeasurably more than anything we can ask or even imagine, to him be the glory in the church forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We're going to close this morning by singing our closing hymn number 562, Savior again to thy dear name we raise. serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, everybody. Yeah, so you're going to...
uh, go to the shack for the week again? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay one more night in that motel. Okay. And because I don't want to drive up in this stuff, if there's 10 inches on the roads up there. Yeah. yeah. Um, then I, I'm going to go up tomorrow yeah. on my birthday, and I'm going to try oh, to shoot the big buck. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm going to, I'll come back Tuesday night for the board meeting. Okay. Probably. We'll see how the weather is. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, if, when you need anything, let us know. Thank you. Yep. Thankfully, she's got Amy right there. Okay. Who is making her runs. And All right. Thank you, guys. Yeah, you drive safe. Everybody, take care. Yeah, bye, Heather. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Yeah. God's <laughs> peace. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you were right where you said the congregation may be seated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, whoa! Oh, you know what? I didn't, I didn't push that out. Oh, yeah. It's right on the pulpit.